Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Ezra chapter 3 verse 13 as well as Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Father God for this word. Lord God help us to stay positive no matter what we see with our eyes. Help us to have faith. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Ezra chapter three, verse 13, so that the people could not distinguish the sound of the joyful noise from the joyful shout from the sound of the people weeping for the people shouted with a great shout and the sound was heard far away. All right, so it says that the people could not distinguish the sound of the joyful shout from the sound of the people's weeping. Remember, the people had a joyful shout because um, the temple's foundation was being set, right? And so some people were joyful and happy about it. But a lot of the people who were um, brought into captivity, who had not been born into captivity, could see this foundation of the temple laid and they weeped because they knew like this was because of their sin. This was having to be started over. They remember the beauty of the previous temple, Solomon's temple, and they remembered all the the effort that had gone into the previous temple. And so their hearts were broken. They were weeping. There was so much weeping and loud weeping that you couldn't distinguish the loud, loud shouts from the weeping. So it was just a lot going on. It was a lot of emotion and, you know, probably a lot of sadness and happiness as well. All right, so it says, so that the people could not distinguish the sound of the joyful shout from the sound of the people's weeping, or the people shouted with a great shout, and the sound was heard far away. So the people that could hear these types of things far away, they didn't like it, right? They they didn't want Jerusalem to come back and be strong. They wanted, you know, um, basically the land they wanted to not have anyone um who is claiming to be the children of God around them right all right and so this is completed today with Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 12 at that time the Jews who lived near them came from all directions and said to us 10 times you must return to us so meaning you must return and help us right so they they were coming to them um to Nehemiah and the people who were building the wall and they were wanting help they were wanting security right because the enemy was just coming at them from all directions trying to stop the plans of the Lord stop the wall from being built and so these two are conflated today because you know they're both speaking of a time a joyous occasion occasion that's supposed to be so perfect and so beautiful um the the pouring of the foundation as well as you know um the the jews who who were seeing this wall being built after all this time of captivity right so you have two very joyous occasions and at the same time they're mingled with sadness mingled with fear right? We have to know when the enemy has entered in. We have to know when the season has shifted. We have to know when it's okay to cry and versus okay to laugh because the thing is, we don't want to be caught off guard, right? We want to know what season we're in and the timing that we're in so we can act accordingly and appropriately. So those people, they were afraid, right? When they came to um, tell Nehemiah and, you know, uh, the people working on the wall about this, they needed immediate help, right? They needed like 911 help because they had a bunch of enemies surrounding them trying to stop the work of God from going forth. So, um, and this is the same thing with the conflation verse, you know, the foundation had to be poor. The foundation had to be laid people you know had to move forward in the service of God even amongst the the sadness right which was disappointment due to sin 
um, disappointment due to remembering the previous beauty of the place. And, you know, just regardless of where it comes from, we have to put our hope and our trust in the Lord. We have to know that he is in control and that he can see our situation. Um, he knows that, you know, there's going to be sadness and sometimes there's going to be joy and sometimes they're going to fall during the same time. There's going to be some, some running and, and running around. I'm not going to necessarily say fear, but there's going to be people who are reacting as well as people who are protecting, right? It is just the seasons that we go to and having to distinguish and have the discernment to know how to act appropriately in that season. The appropriate response, which was um, to send more security to those area um, where the Jews were in need, that was a wonderful idea. And it came to pass that, you know, when they, when they sent the securities, they were able to finish this wall in like 52 days, right? This great big wall. And that's a miracle, right? The weapon may form, but it won't prosper. We have to know how to move in and out of season. We have to know how to respond to the wiles of the devil. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word, Lord God. Bless your children in Jesus' name. We love you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of Jesus Christ's return. No one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. So the Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he's going to show you the way he is. He has a still small voice and he is speaking. We just have to listen one of the best ways to sit and learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is sit somewhere, open up your word, chew on some word, ask him some questions and learn how to sit back and wait for the answer. Amen. All right, you guys go out, make disciples of all men, go be baptized, um, follow in the ways of the Lord and walk up brightly, right? Um, Christ Jesus is covering us and he is coming soon. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.